Firefly Aerospace has been very busy since its last mission back in October of last year. This was the company's second mission, and they considered it a success despite the fact that its payloads, placed in a lower orbit than planned, re-entered within several days. Either way, it was still an impressive performance for the second ever launch and a big improvement from the first orbital test flight. In the time since then, we've seen significant engine testing and some of the final preparation for the third launch attempt. Right now, the Alpha rocket is at the pad and performing various testing to ensure the systems are working well. Assuming these different tests provide promising results, we could expect to see Alpha liftoff in only weeks from now. This time around, Firefly is trying to make sure that the rocket not only reaches orbit, but gets to its exact destination for proper payload deployment and demonstration. Here I'll go more in depth into the recent launch prep, the details of this mission, what to expect in the coming weeks, and more. Starting only days ago on the 28th, Firefly tweeted saying, Launch update. Things are rocking in Vandenberg. The team has moved Alpha to the pad ahead of final system testing and a full duration static fire for the Space Force DoD Victus Knox responsive space mission. Just weeks prior, the company was in the final integration of their Alpha rocket and were standing ready for the 24 hour call up. Back in October, Firefly announced that the company had been selected by the U.S. Space Forces or USSF Space Systems Command to provide launch services for SSC's Victus Knox mission. The effort was awarded as a Tactically Responsive Space Launch Service Task Order under the Orbital Services Program 4 contract. The Victus Knox mission is intended to demonstrate the end-to-end -end tactically responsive space capability, including the launch segment, space segment, ground segment, and on-orbit operations. Victus Knox will perform a space domain awareness mission from low Earth orbit. This awareness is a growing priority of the military as space traffic increases in orbit. Based on that description, the mission will likely help the military find and monitor spacecraft and space debris that could pose a threat to U.S. orbital assets. At the time of this announcement, Bill Weber, CEO of Firefly Aerospace, commented, We are honored to be chosen by Space Force for this important national security mission. Now more than ever, our country needs the ability for quick response capabilities to combat threats in space. Our Alpha launch vehicle is designed to drive affordable, rapid access to space. We look forward to working with Lieutenant Colonel Justin Belts and Lieutenant Colonel Mackenzie Birchenoff along with their experienced team at Space Force to help bring this innovation to the national security community. Overall, the main purpose of this mission is to demonstrate the United States' ability to rapidly place an asset on orbit where and when they need it, ensuring they can augment their space capabilities with very little notice. In other words, the goal of the program is to bolster the United States' responsive space capabilities, allowing for the fast deployment of satellites during a conflict. Space Systems Command is committed to addressing threats in the space domain, and Victus Knox will provide space capabilities on an unprecedented timeline, stated Lieutenant Colonel Justin Belts, SSC's Small Launch and Targets Division Chief. The United States launch industry is the envy of the world, innovating to bring more speed and more capability at a lower price, he said. In the grand scheme of things, Firefly is developing a family of launch and in-space vehicles and services that are meant to provide industry-leading affordability, convenience, and reliability. Firefly's launch vehicles utilize common technologies, manufacturing infrastructure, and launch capabilities, providing LEO launch solutions for up to 10 metric tons of payload at the lowest cost per kilogram in the small launch class. In the short period of time that Firefly Aerospace has been operating, the company has made some very impressive progress. Combined with Firefly's in-space vehicles such as the Space Utility Vehicle and Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, Firefly is confident they can provide the space industry with a single source for missions from LEO to the surface of the moon or beyond. This upcoming launch will be the third Alpha mission, and comes after the recent, mostly successful mission. As partially mentioned prior, Firefly said it was successful, however others question this claim based on the payloads. Specifically, the mission press kit distributed by Firefly ahead of the launch said that the satellites would be placed in a 300km orbit after the upper stage performed a circularization burn. However, Space Force tracking data initially placed the payloads into orbits with a perigee of about 220km and an apogee of 275km. These orbits caused the payloads to decay rapidly. According to the Space Force's Space Track database, three of the objects re-entered by October 5th and the 4th, the Alpha Upper Stage, re-entered on October 7th. Firefly, however, reiterated that the launch was a success. First stage and second stage performance was in line with our flight to requirements and therefore successful, the company said in response to questions. The flight began with a nominal countdown and liftoff at 12.01 a.m. PDT and progressed flawlessly through each stage of flight then inserting into an elliptical transfer orbit, coasting to Apogee, and performing a circularization burn with confirmation of final payload deployment at approximately T plus one hour, which was one of the most technically challenging aspects of the mission. 
This flight deployed a total of three payloads, including demonstration satellites for NASA's TechEd Sat-15 in conjunction with San Jose State University, Teachers in Space, and the Libra Space Foundation. These payloads were meant to perform several in-space experiments, including an exobreak, to help in the deorbiting of satellites and test the world's first fully free open-source telecommunications constellation. Moving on from this last mission, the company has been working on an even bigger engine for a bigger rocket. Just over a week ago, the company tweeted mentioning, Risk reduction testing for our Miranda engines is complete and we're on track for the first hot fire this summer. As a larger, scaled-up version of our Reaver engines, Miranda will power the medium launch vehicle we're co-developing with Northrop Grumman. We are making significant progress in the development of our Miranda engines that started less than a year ago, said Bill Weber. By leveraging our fleet-proven engine architecture and our team's propulsion expertise, we are conducting a hot fire test in just a few months. The risk reduction testing was successfully completed for Miranda's main fuel valve and the throttle valve hot seal design. The hot seal was tested several times during routine Reaver engine hot fires. Due to the commonality of Firefly's engine designs, the team can conduct robust flight-like testing and validate performance for both Alpha and MLV. We built prototypes and successfully tested Miranda's most complicated components first, and now we're in the final stages of building the first development engines, said the director of propulsion at Firefly. Our engines are designed to allow for the natural evolution to considerably higher thrust. With 230,000 pounds of thrust, Miranda is building on the success of Lightning and Reaver with proven engine scalability. Miranda uses the same engine architecture, injector design, and patented tap-off cycle as the Reaver and Lightning engines that power Firefly's orbital alpha vehicle. Miranda also incorporates a scaled-up version of Reaver's turbopump, fluid systems, and valve technology. The company used extensive data from more than 500 Reaver and Lightning engine tests, accounting for more than two hours of runtime, to scale the Miranda engines and improve reliability. Following Miranda's first hot fire test this summer, Firefly will start engine qualification this fall. The company's culture of rapid design, iteration, and agility further enables Firefly to meet MLV's schedule with a cost-effective, high-performing solution. In comparison, Alpha utilizes well-established propulsion technology. Both stages use common designs, copper region-cooled lock slash RP-1 thrust chambers, a simple tap-off cycle which drives single-shaft turbo pumps, nozzle-mounted turbine exhaust manifolds, and hydraulic actuators. Innovations in Firefly engines include crossfire injector, tap-off geometry, and ultra-compact horizontal turbo pump mounting. The upper stage engine Lightning includes a turbine exhaust cooled refractory metal high area ratio nozzle extension. The first stage Reaver engine features simple single axis gimbling. Consistent with the overall Alpha vehicle design, cost and performance are traded and optimized in Lightning and Reaver components to provide the best payload performance value. In the coming weeks, we can expect to see more tests in these exact engines in action. Firefly Aerospace could be just weeks away from its next mission. This time around, they're hoping for a 100% successful launch with no questions regarding payload deployment and re-entry. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.